Okay, friends, welcome to part three. Now we're going to start talking about maybe making a soundtrack here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this coolest thing about Mavic Pro because that's just me, you know, playing with a bag. I don't particularly like it. I'm going to let's just get another piece of cool video that we can edit here with these uh, bits of river stuff. So I'm going to right, I'm going to, excuse me, left click dub, two times in here, double click. And now I'm going to go to up here and just pick some more cool video. Let's see if we can find, here's all of Mineral Springs Mountain. Okay, this is a video I recently shot. I've not put commentary on it yet. It's going to import it. This is another bit of drone video of me flying across a mountain where I live. So I'm going to go to this point up here. And this is kind of cool. Looks like I'm looking back down the ridge from with my drone. I'm going to put an end point here. I'm going to hit play. Okay. And I think I'm suddenly going to move the drone and look out that direction. And it's terrible. I don't like that. I'm going to fast forward a little bit more. Where do I start riding the ridge? That's what I want to do. I want to ride the ridge. Here we go. This is the ridge I live on near Valdez, North Carolina. That's kind of a cool piece of video, isn't it? All right. And so I'm going to stop there and put my out point. I'm going to pull that in, into here in the tie line. Now look what I'm doing here. You see how I'm pulling that in between where I, it's a, it's a different sized bit of video than what I had before. I've got these blank spaces. Now, if I just pull this over here, it will click to the end of the other one. Now, uh, here's, here's a little, let's pull another bit of video just for fun over here. I'm going to put it in here. I'll put an out over here. And so here's another bit of video at the end of this. So let's see that I let's say that I want to delete the, the space. Let's say I have 50 videos here and I've ticked some out and I want to delete space. You can right click in here and do a thing called ripple delete. You just right click in the space, ripple delete. And what it does, it pulls this video, but also this video. So that way, as, as I zoom back out here, if I had 50 pieces of video out here, I didn't want to have to move every one of them individually, or I didn't want to have to draw around them and pull them all that way, one way or the other, I can just right click in here and say ripple delete, and it pulls everything that is on this side over here back that way. Very handy. I use ripple delete all the time. Now I'm going to mute this. I don't want to hear any of this audio. I kind of like to hear some music. So folks, I subscribe to a, um, a place called Digital Juice where you can get royalty free music. You can get royalty free music a lot of different places, but I use Digital Juice. I'm going to go import some Digital Juice music that is royalty free. So I'm going to go to my extreme hard drive here. And somewhere here I have, I'll just look at this alphabetically, Digital Juice Stack Tracks is what I like to use. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. And I'm going to pick something. I'm going to pick something epic here. I don't know, high impact. A lot of times I like to use cinematic. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to pick. A 60 second, I have no idea what Blossom sounds like, but we're going to import it. Now, I could import a bunch of music and preview it, and the way you just preview music, you just right click on it and it shows the wave, right? So let's just listen a little bit of this and see if it's any good. It's not bad, is it? I've muted the, uh, muted the audio down here so I don't have to listen to myself talking. So I'm going to pull the audio. You see there's no option to drag video because it's grayed out. There's no video here. It knows it's just audio and I'll pull it down here to this line. So you see here that my audio, as I pull this little thing here to scale, pull this little thing here to scale, you see that my audio is longer than the video is. You know, if I want that audio to end, uh, maybe I want to, it has a nice fade out at the end here. Listen to this. Let's say I want that audio to end there. I can grab the end here, and by that I just hover over it, and it gives me that little red, uh, kind of like shorten, shorten it tool. <laughs> I don't know what you call that. But I just grabbed it, and I, I, I uh, hovered over it, left-clicked on it, and pulled it in. I saw it, or I could pull it out. I could pull it into any point I want to. I like where that faded out there. Now, this video fades in from the beginning, Let's say I want this to fit this. I'm gonna. I'm actually go to the end of this, but I'm gonna pull it back some, and I want this video to set to end or the audio to end right there. Boy, I've got some rain outside. I hope you might be hearing it picking out over my mic, up over my microphone. Apologies for that. I'm gonna go to here now. This this audio is gonna start abruptly now. Uh, okay, and you see when you when you zoom in wherever this thing is, that's where it's gonna zoom to. So I'm gonna pull this back to the beginning because I want to edit at the beginning. I'm gonna zoom in. So I'm going to 
click on this. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to add my default transition, which I know is a constant power. And I'm going to let this swell up a little bit here like it is the beginning, even though it's really not. But that's sort of a way you can trick it out. We're going to have the audio fade in a little bit gently here at the beginning. And let's listen to what it sounds like. Pretty good. Once again, you see I brought 4K video into a 1080p window. If I click on it again, we'll go up under effects controls. And I know that it's 50% is what the, that's what gives me my full size there. Same thing over here, 4K video here. I might decide I want this to be 70%. You can, of course, resize your 4K video any way you want to. Again, like it's just a bit of review from a previous lesson. But that's how you do it. So now I have a uh, audio soundtrack underneath this. Let's say I think it's a little too harsh, it's a little too loud. You can right click on this and you can say audio gain. Okay, so I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say adjust gain by, let's say minus nine decibels. And now, I don't know if you noticed, but the wave got less fat. And that means it's going to be quieter. Let's listen to it now. See, that's, that's how I would... Uh, that's how I would I would make the music a little less loud so I could put a voiceover on. Now I'm going to go grab a voiceover from any video that I've done in the past just so you can see how voiceovers work. Since this is Lake Rodius, maybe I'll just get my Lake Rodius voiceover. So I'm going to uh, double click over here. Let's left click. I'm going to go back to my folder where Lake Rodius is. And probably, here's how I do it. I usually just say Tony Commentary. Look at this. I did one commentary I didn't like. Then I did one I call Better Commentary. We'll use that one. So I just imported it. So now I've got Tony Better Commentary. And here's my commentary. If I play it, it sounds like this. You ready to record my Lake Road Hit, Road Hits commentary? And I'll start in three, two, one, and go. So I always do this kind of intro, folks. And this might be helpful to you, too. I, I, I try to give myself a lead in so I know I can synchronize uh, what I'm watching on the screen with what I've recorded. You, you'll find out that to, that to be kind of Helpful. I can see where my click is here, I think, or that's probably me doing a pop of my mouth. Probably clicked it somewhere here. And go. But sometimes I'll even do a hand clap. I'll even clap my hands to synchronize the video that I'm recording or the audio I'm recording with the video later because you can see little spikes and stuff like that. They're very abrupt. A hand, clap to, a hand clap will look just like that. At any rate, this is where my audio really starts. I'm going to put an end point here. Let's listen to it just a little. Friends in YouTube land, this is Lake Rodhiss. That's R-H-O-D-H-I-S-S. -S. I'm going to stop at this point. That's all we need to show you this. I'm going to mark my out, and I'm going to pull the audio down here. So let's say we want this to start, you know, a couple seconds in. I can pull this to start anywhere I want it to start. I can bring as many clips as I want to down here on this track. So now we're going to have this, and I can see that I'm talking kind of low here. So I'm going to right-click on this one, and I'm going to do audio gain. And there's, there's a couple things you can do here. Typically, uh, you, can, you can judge how much you want to go up, but if you want to know that it's going to sound okay and not peak, you can go here and you click Normalize Max Peak to 0 decibels, and it, it will analyze the video, or you can also pick the, uh, uh, Normalize All Peaks to a different decibel here. I always just do, usually just do this one. I'm going to say OK, and what's going to happen? Now, it just made it fat. You see that got that 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 wave got real fat, too, now. And if we right-click on it again and see audio gain, we'll go, uh-oh, check audio gain. We'll see that it automatically, what it did, it analyzed the audio, and it brought it up 9.8 decibels. It knew what it could do without peaking, okay? So I'm going to say cancel. We know that that's going to be all right. And here's what it sounds like now. And so it's a... Ah, I'm clicking the wrong thing. I'm going to click down here. I can either click over here again, hit play, or I can just pull this down here to the beginning, and I can hit my space bar. So I'm going to hit my space bar. Friends in YouTube land, this is Lake Rodhiss. That's R-H-O-D-H-I-S-S. -S. Of course, it switched over to Mineral Springs Mountain at that point. So there we go. That is the rudimentary way of doing audio. Now, let's say you want to add a sound effect or something. I might as well go ahead and show you this while I'm here. We'll probably talk about it more later. 
but we're going to go up under sequence and we're going to do add tracks. So you can add as many audio tracks as you want. You see this 5.1 down here? Usually we're using stereo tracks. The so stereo means there's a left and there's a right. There's a left and there's a right. See, these are actually two tracks each for these audios. And it usually by default gives you three uh, layers of audio. Then it gives you these 5.1 mixes. Now, I don't typically do a whole lot of 5.1 mixing, but you can do your Dolby 5.1 or whatever in, on this. I find this to be a little aggravating. I usually, if I wanted to do six or seven audios and have a little, I don't know, maybe I want to make this a little cool something happening here. I don't know what some other kind of sound effect, wind swooshing or something like that. I can go find sound effects. You can find thousands of them. Again, you can get them on Digital Juice, wherever you want to, to find your, uh, your audio effects. But what you're going to do, you're going to say add maybe one or two or three or four or five. It doesn't matter. Let's do six audio tracks. I'm going to tell it not to add a video track at this point. We'll say zero. And I'm going to tell it to add it after three. And th that way it pushes all these other audio tracks down. I'm going to say okay. And now look, now we've got a whole bunch of other stereo audio effects. So now if I wanted to bring an audio uh, sound effect of some sort, I don't have one loaded up, but if I wanted to, I could bring that in. I could have a sound effect. If I want people clapping, whistling, cheering, whatever I want to, on another uh, layer, we can do that. We can do it with a lot. We can put a lot of different layers in here. And if you uh, go over here and you and you pull down on this, whoops, that resizes. Okay, better way better way to, to see your various different audios would be to pull this up temporarily, and it will show your various different audio tracks. And we can size this back up so it's smaller. This does bring up a good thing. If you want to see your audios and all here, you go and you use this little thing here to zoom up and down, just the same as we use this one to zoom left or right. So now I'm going to pull this back down so that we can just view, our, view it the way we like to. It might be a little bit fat there now. We'll pull this back. So folks, there we've done some rudimentary audio. Now one thing that people might want to know is how do you fade it out at the end. Same way you faded it with anything else. You can right click on it, you can hit your apply default transitions. It's going to be a cross fade. So this automatically naturally fades out. But I'm going to go here and look if I want to fade out even more over time. I can pull that out and it fades a little more subtly. So it comes to be like this now. It's actually fading out differently than it did before. The fade out starts a little sooner based on the fact that I pulled this that way. And since it has its own fade out, I could just hit delete and we don't even need one. All right, folks, that concludes this little introductory into audio editing. We'll go much deeper into audio editing in a future clip.